Rise above, empowering yourself through Nehemiah 4's strategies. Discover the key strategies outlined in Nehemiah 4 that can help you rise above any opposition and empower yourself to reach new heights. From managing self-doubt to facing external challenges, this video provides practical insights and actionable steps to ensure your success. Take control of your life and embrace the power within you. In life, we often face walls of opposition that seem insurmountable. But what if we could empower ourselves to overcome these obstacles? Today, we'll dive into the blueprint for empowerment as outlined in Nehemiah 4 and discover how it can help us conquer our own challenges. Meet Nehemiah, a man with a burning desire to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He faced opposition on multiple fronts, but his unwavering determination carried him through. Let's explore Nehemiah 4's blueprint for empowerment, step by step. Step 1. Assess the situation and create a plan. Nehemiah assessed the damage, identified weak spots, and devised a strategic plan to rebuild the wall. Similarly, we must take the time to evaluate our challenges, understand our strengths and weaknesses, and chart a course for success. Step 2. Overcome discouragement through motivation. Nehemiah faced ridicule and doubt from his enemies but he refused to let it derail his efforts. He motivated his team, reminding them of their purpose and encouraging their skills. We too must learn to empower ourselves by seeking motivation within and surrounding ourselves with supportive individuals who uplift us. Step 3. Persistence in the face of opposition. Nehemiah encountered countless obstacles, from threats of violence to audacious accusations, but he persisted, never giving up on his vision. We must develop a resilience that fuels us to push forward, even when faced with overwhelming opposition. Step 4. Embrace teamwork and collaboration. Nehemiah understood the importance of unity and collaboration. He organized his team to work hand-in-hand, -hand, supporting each other both physically and emotionally. By engaging with others, pooling our resources, and seeking help when needed, we can multiply our efforts and achieve greater success. Step 5. Celebrate achievements and learn from failures. As Nehemiah finished the wall, he took the time to celebrate this significant accomplishment with his team. At the same time, he reflected on the challenges they faced and the lessons learned along the way. By acknowledging our victories, no matter how small, and learning from our setbacks, we empower ourselves to grow and improve. As we apply Nehemiah 4's blueprint for overcoming opposition in our own lives, we too can empower ourselves to conquer any wall that stands in our way. It all starts with assessing the situation, motivating ourselves, persisting against opposition, embracing collaboration, and celebrating our achievements. Remember, with the right blueprint and an unwavering determination, there's no limit to what we can overcome. But it came to pass that when Sambalat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Whereat he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. For hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Discussion Questions 
What do you think was the purpose of Sambalad's and Tobiah's speech to their buddies in verses three to four? How does Nehemiah respond when he hears about it? What is his prayer? What do you think of his prayer? Why could they make such quick progress on the wall? Verse six. One, opposition continued. In verses one to three, we see that the opposition the builders faced didn't crumble away. Instead, it intensified. Many times, this type of opposition is not short-term. Being victorious once doesn't guarantee you won't face it again. It also doesn't guarantee you will be victorious the next time. God wanted them to rebuild the wall, but he did not remove the opposition. Why? Lorem ipsum. 2. Sanballat was angry. Believers doing right things serving the Lord sometimes stirs up an unnatural hatred in the unbelievers around us. There is not a good logical reason for this hatred. We have to understand that we are A in a spiritual war. See Ephesians 6. Understand that Satan uses people as pawns in his war against all things good and holy will help us to understand the source of this anger or hatred. I have had many friends who have faced angry parents or bosses because of their decision to serve the Lord. One's father threatened to get a gang together and break his leg, and then ransack his house. I met this father and he was so angry, you could visibly see it on his face. It looked like the veins in his head were going to burst. His whole body was visibly shaking. Another's father yelled him the entire day for the entire spring festival vacation, and then the next visit back did the same thing again. Satan is angry when we choose God. People under his dominion, he is called the God of this world in the Bible, may be angry as well. Don't be surprised, and don't let it discourage you. 3. Sanballat and Tobiah's speech. In chapter 2, we see Nehemiah's speech, which was meant to inspire the people to work. Here we see the counterpart to that speech. Only this speech is not given to inspire people to work. It is given to inspire people to destroy. 4, 7, 8. See John 10, 10. The thrust of their mocking was, you can't do it. This is a lie from Satan. If God wants us to do something, he will give us the strength and resources to accomplish it. Seven. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Ten. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. Eleven, and our adversaries said, They shall not know neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them, and cause the work to cease. Twelve, and it came to pass, that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. 14. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. 15. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. 16. And it came to pass from that time forth, that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. 17. They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laded, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. 18. For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me, Saintitiuntan. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. 20. In what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet, 
Resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. 21. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Konu likewise at the same time said I unto the people, Let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us, and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for washing. One, what groups of people were opposing the rebuilding project? What did they decide to do? Three, how did Nehemiah hear about this threat? How did Nehemiah respond to this new threat? Besides praying, what else did he do? Six, where did this saying come from in verse 10? Why does Nehemiah reference it here? Seven, how did Nehemiah encourage the people? Eight, what changes did Nehemiah make to prevent future attacks? Nine, what lessons can we lean from Nehemiah? About leadership? About planning? About responding to opposition? Ten, when we work for the Lord, what kind of adversity or opposition may we face? Eleven, how can we persevere and not give up? One, Nehemiah prays against his enemies. What do you think of his prayer? First, we see that Nehemiah turned to the right place with his concerns. He didn't take revenge. He didn't return insults. He simply prayed. He prayed to ask for God's help. Basically, he a similar prayer to the principle in Romans 12, 19. I won't take revenge, but God, please avenge us against them. In the Old Testament, the concept of grace was not as prevalent as in the New Testament. Justice was emphasized more. Basically, this is a prayer for justice rather than a prayer for mercy or grace. Should we pray like this? I would answer no, because we have been given a specific command by Jesus to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Matthew 5, 44. Nehemiah had not been given this command, since it is a New Testament command. The good aspect of Nehemiah's prayer is that he puts the judgment of his enemies in God's hands. He is not willing to take action against Sanballat and his gang, but asks God to intervene on their behalf. Application. When we are suffering injustice, perhaps from a boss, school, or government, we should turn to the Lord and ask Him to intervene on our behalf. It is right to ask God to intervene for us to give us justice. See the persevering widow in Luke 18. 2. Verse 6. Nehemiah didn't just pray. That was their first reaction to the adversity. Then they started working. The text says that they had a mind to work. In last week's passage, we learned that working, if doing it with the right motivation for the Lord, is a good thing. If something is worth doing, it is worth doing wholeheartedly. See Colossians 3, 23, 24. When God gives us a task to do, we should do it to the best of our ability. We should obey joyfully, quickly, and completely. They were able to make rapid progress on the wall because they were unified and worked hard. When we join hands together to zealously serve the Lord, He could also use us to accomplish great things. Ren duo li liang da, this is a Chinese idiom that means many hands make light work. 3, verses 7 toward 8. We see that the adversity the Jews faced intensified. Sanbalat and Tobiah went from irritated talking and mocking to angry threats and a conspiracy to attack the city. Once the walls were finished, it would be too late to mount a successful attack against the city without a much stronger force than they had. Also, it is likely that they were not expecting a lot of opposition. They likely thought that the Jews' fortitude would melt away as soon as they faced some actual loss. Sambalat and his friends are like the school bully who expects people to cower and run away and give him whatever he wants just because he scowls at them. Principle. Just because you successfully stand up to temptation or adversity the first time doesn't mean that is the end of it. In the Bible, Satan described as an adversary and he is sometimes very persistent. 4 verse 9. Here we see Nehemiah and the people's response to this new threat. They pray and they prepare. They were vigilant and alert. They followed the command from Peter in 1 Peter 5 8 to be alert against the attacks of the devil more than 500 years before it was even written. 5. Fear and discouragement. Were the threats of Sambalat and his friends successful? Initially, the threats were partially successful. In verse 10, we see that people began to be disheartened. They started muttering. Hope began to fade. 
before the people were optimistic. They believed that by working together and relying on the Lord, they could finish the task. But now their eyes were starting to turn away from God and instead focus on the sheer size of the task before them. They focused on their own weakness and the sorry state of the walls. Doubt began to creep in. Once the doubt began to creep in, the enemy stepped up their verbal attacks even more, threatening surprise attacks and promising to kill the workers. The workers were not expert wall builders. The project was immense, and the opposition was intense. Jews who lived near Sambalat and his buddies started coming in with reports. They didn't bring one or two or three reports about the possible attack, but ten. How could a worker keep building the wall when several times a day his neighbors rushed into the city, warning that the enemy was going to come and attack and kill them all? Those kinds of threats made it extremely difficult to focus on the job in front of them. God wants us to have faith but Satan wants us to doubt. Can you think of any other examples in the Bible where Satan tempted people to doubt God? See Exodus 32, 1, where the people doubted if Moses would come down again from the mountain. 6. Nehemiah addresses the people. Verse 14. The people were afraid. This is a normal reaction. Nehemiah himself was afraid back in chapter 1 when the king asked why he was sad. But he didn't allow the fear to control him. Here he doesn't want fear to control the people's response either. He reminds them that God is great and awesome. God will be with them. At the same time, they have to prepare themselves to fight. Remembering their family can motivate them to get ready to fight and to fight bravely. Application. When we face adversity, we may be afraid, but do not allow fear to control you. Remember that God is great and awesome. He is with you. Remember too that God gives us spiritual armor. See Ephesians 6. He gives us armor because he intends to use it. There is not guarantee that believers will not face adversity or persecution. In fact, just the opposite. See 2 Timothy 3.12. We will face persecution if we are living godly lives. How can you be ready when that persecution comes? 7. Nehemiah's plan. Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah addressed the people. Nehemiah knew God was with them. At the same time, Nehemiah prepared the people to defend themselves. Trusting in God is not an excuse for laziness. Let us look at Nehemiah's defense plan. He focused defense near the weakest parts of the wall. 13. 2. Half of the people stood guard while the other half worked. 16. 3. Those who worked carried their weapon at the same time. 17 to 18. 4. He assigned some people as lookouts with trumpets to rally support to any place which might be attacked. 19 to 20. 5. He made the people stay in the city at night instead of returning back to their homes outside the wall. 22. 6. He had all the people be on alert at all times with their weapons always ready. 23. 8. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See verse 15. See James 4, 7. When their enemies saw all the measures taken against them, they gave up their plan of attack, and the Jews were able to focus again on building the wall. 9. Satan wants to stop us from doing God's work. What obstacles are you facing against serving God? Are you facing obstacles at work, at home, in your family, in your ministry? Will you allow Satan to stop you from doing the work God has prepared for you? On adversity, 2 Corinthians 4, 8-9, afflicted but not crushed. Peter 5-10, after you have suffered, God will strengthen you. Proverbs 24-10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Psalms 34-19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. On persecution, 2 Timothy 3.12, all who desire to live godly lives will be persecuted. John 15.18, if the world hates you, it hated me first. And Peter 3.14.17, suffer for doing good rather than evil. Comment, leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts of this Bible study on Nehemiah 4. We want to help you study the Bible, obey the Bible, and teach the Bible to others.